Hello, welcome to section 8.3. In 8.2, we were basically taking a look at the properties of parallelograms. So if something was a parallelogram, it had a lot of, uh, a lot of different properties to it. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go the backwards way and we're gonna say if this quadrilateral has these properties, then it is a parallelogram. So we're gonna prove quadrilaterals are parallel parallelograms. And yesterday in the video I mentioned uh, with the angles proving the opposite of sides or angles. Like I said, you if you show it for one way here, showing like B and D are the same, the whole proof is identical um, for showing A and C are the same. You just draw on the other diagonal and do the whole thing. So that's why I scribbled all this because it's just like it's just like a lot of extra work that you I, I wouldn't expect you guys to do. Um, it just makes the proof way more than it needs to be. Okay, so let's show that. Um, Quadrilaterals are parallelograms today. We're the, basically, a lot of it is like yesterday. Um, if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it's parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite angles are um, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallel parallelogram. So if they're almost like the converses. All right. So let's uh, start the day with uh, one of these proofs here. We're going to say if the opposite sides are congruent, then it's parallel. Right now, the only way that we can prove that this is a parallelogram is to show that the opposite uh, sides are parallel. Once we use, once we prove 8.7, then we can use 8.7 for the other proofs and it's actually a lot easier. So let's start with um, a given here. And then I'm gonna go with the reflexive side. AC is congruent to CA. And then the two triangles are already congruent. So triangle, here's the triangle, side, side, side. Okay, so I've done all that. Now the, what I'm going for here is alternate interior converse. I'm gonna show the alternate interior angles are congruent, which makes the lines parallel. So I'm gonna start with, call that angle one and this angle two. So I'm gonna say angle one is congruent to angle two by CPCPC. This makes AB parallel to CD. Then what I'm going to do, um, let's see, is alternate interior converse. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say angle three is congruent to angle four. Let's use different color here. We'll use red. That makes BC parallel to AD. So angle three is congruent to angle four, CPCPC. And then we'll say that A. D is parallel to BC. Again, alternate interior converse. And because I have both sets of lines parallel, that makes ABC a parallel parallelogram. So ABCD is a parallelogram definition of parallelogram. If both sets of opposite sides are parallel, then the shape's a parallelogram. All right, and here's the angle one. This one is different. The reason why I'm doing this one for you guys is rather than putting it in your notes, because it's a little bit different. Um, let's see, let me give us an nice hint. They say let X represent A and C, and then let uh, Y represent these two. So. Uh, we can start off with our given. I wonder if using a two column proof might be better for this. Um, or sorry, using a paragraph proof. I'm gonna do a paragraph proof because I think it's gonna work out a little bit better. So we're just gonna say angle A is congruent to angle C and angle B is congruent to angle D by given, and then we'll say let x represent the measure of angle A and angle C, let y represent the measure of angle B and D. Then we'll write 
rewrite the equation. 2x plus 2y equals 360. Sum of interior angles. It's a quadrilateral. They have to sum to 360. Okay, and then divide by 2. And x plus y equals 180. So I just showed that the uh, consecutive angles are supplementary. You're probably wondering, what am I doing with this? Okay, well, I'm going to take a quick pause here, x and y. If these two angles are supplementary, then these two lines are parallel. That is the same side interior converse. And that's what I was going for. Maybe I should have said what I was going for. I don't think I said that. But we have consecutive angles. Here and here. So those B, C, and A, D are parallel. And then if I switch my colors, let's see, go back to blue here. These two are supplementary, so, so these two are parallel. Um, using, let's scroll down here, using the consecutive interior converse. can say that AD is parallel to CD. And we can say that BC is parallel to AD. Thus, ABCD is a parallelogram by Okay, so that was an interesting proof because it involved a little bit of algebra writing that equation there and showing that the consecutive angles are uh, supplementary in order to, or sorry, the consecutive interior angles are supplementary to make the lines parallel. So that was kind of neat. Uh, this is an interesting one. It says that no matter what, basically, however I move these, if I make the quadrilateral, so if I connect, I move these like this, and then I draw in these two sides there, makes a parallelogram. Or if I move them really close, if I did this one right, this one's a little off. Okay, it makes a parallelogram. So this is the idea that 8.9 is. If you have one pair of opposite sides, of a quadrilateral that are congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we only have one step. We're looking for that right there. And the other one is if the diagonals of a quadrilateral, quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We talked about this one yesterday. The if it's a parallelogram, it has that property. But this is the kind of the converse of it. All right, I'm going to skip this theorem. I'm going to do this theorem uh, for you guys in class, number 33, just because the videos get a little bit long. Uh, these are really straightforward problems. You can see a lot of these. 5x minus 8 has to equal 3x because the diagonals have to bisect each other. We solve that. 2x equals 8. x equals 4. That will make that shape a parallelogram. So those the questions you can see like that are pretty easy, I think. Um, show that this is quadrilateral. Um, I would just use slopes. It's probably the easiest method for this one. This one goes down three over three, so it's negative one. This one goes down three over three, so it's negative one. This one goes up two over two, four, five, so that's two fifths. This one goes up two over five, so that's also two fifths. So just check their slopes in this case. The both sets of opposite sides are parallel because the slopes are the same. All right, so these are breakdown old methods. We have sure showing uh, quadrilaterals are parallelograms. The definition and the, the new one from today. And there's your assignment. Uh, and then we're going to add 33 as a class. Because we're going to.
to start off with that when you guys get to class. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you in class.